Okay, so the purpose of this video is to break down recursion. And I'm going to do that by demonstrating a reverse string algorithm. And this video is going to go in three basic steps. The first step, I'm just going to break down call stack and the order in which functions get executed. Because that's going to be really important to really understanding what's going on during recursion. Then in the next step, I'm going to actually be writing that reverse string algorithm. I'm going to be showing it works. I'm going to be showing you some examples. And then in the last step, I'm just going to break it down in, in such a way that you could understand what's going on at each step and each call of the recursive algorithm. So if you don't know what recursion is, it's like, it's like a function that calls itself. So it's kind of like solving a problem by solving a smaller version of that problem. So the way it works is like when you pass in your argument, it will call the same function that you just called with that argument with a smaller argument. And then in that function, in, in that call, the second call, it's going to call it again with a smaller argument. And then it, it just keeps calling itself until it gets to like a baseline where it stops calling itself. Okay, so for the first step is I want to just go through the call stack here. And I'm not going to break down the call stack in huge detail. I just want to show you how a function will have to wait for another function to complete before that function can finish. So I have these three simple functions right here. I'm going to show you them one at a time. So multiply just takes in two numbers and multiplies them and returns that number. So here you expect 100. And then there's a, a get random. I'm not going to go into what all this is doing. That's not important. The point is you take a number, so your min and then your max, and it will get you a random number. New number every time. Then there's two string, which is kind of silly to make your own two string uh, num two string function because it's just built in JavaScript. That's what I'm doing right here. String. I, I could just call this, but that's not the point. The point is I want to use three functions with each other to, to show you what I'm about to show you. So the num dot two string will just return 100 in a string. Okay, so what I want to show you here is what happens if you do num to string and and the number that you want to turn into a string is actually a number that's going to get returned from multiply. So multiply will return a number and that's what's going to get called in num dot two string. And the number that you're going to want to multiply is 64 and a random number between 1 and 10. Okay, so the point here is that num.toString needs to wait for multiply to finish. Multiply needs to return a number, then num.toString can actually execute what's inside there because the argument is actually a function. So that function needs to finish before the argument actually gets its value. And then likewise, multiply needs to wait for get random to finish. So get random is going to do a number. It's going to return a number and it's going to put something right here. So it's going to be something like this where you just say multiply 64 times 6. And then whatever that is, it's going to actually put in the number right there. And then that's going to be the argument that's passed in num.toString and then it's just going to return that. So actually if we go back, we can see that this is, this is going to give a random number each time. It's actually a random number multiplied by 64 turned into a string. Okay, so now I want to uh, show you the, the algorithm for the, for the string reverse. ABC. So, so usually when I do something like this, when I'm making an algorithm that's supposed to return a string, I'll start off really, really simple just so I could see that it's working. And then I'll try more examples. So ABC is perfect. You would expect CBA to come back. So function reverse string. And then you want to do an if statement. And then right after that, an else. And actually, I'll fill in the else right now. And that's, that's going to be all we're going to need. So, and this will take in a string. So let's just say str. So when you call reverse string, you're going to pass a string to it. And what you want to do is you want to check if the string dot length is greater than zero, because 
if the string dot length is less than zero or less than one, I should say. So if it's zero, it'll never be less than zero. A string dot length can't go into negatives. So if the string is empty, then you're just going to return an empty string. This should actually work on an empty string, actually. So if you just pass it an empty string, it will return an empty string, which technically is correct. The, an empty string reversed is still just an empty string. But we're going to want to call this on my string. So if string.length is greater than zero, you want to, now I could do all this on one line, but I'm going to break it down line by line just to make it a bit more obvious. So we want to return the last character, basically. Well, we want to do more than that. But the last character is important because that's the last character is the first character in the reverse string. So string. So the position that we want is dot length minus one. Just because this sort of works like an array. And if you have an array of size of three, the length will be three, but the index of the last item in the array is actually two because the first the first index is zero. So that's why you put the minus one. And actually, let's just um, console.log last character. So it's C. Okay, so that's correct. Now make a reduced string equals to string dot sub string zero str dot length minus one minus one and let's console dot log the reduced string. So a b. So then finally what we want to do here is we want to return last character plus reverse string. Now this is the recursion, right? This is this is what the point of this video is, is that it's returning a character, but then it's calling reverse string. So like I just demonstrated with the call stack, when this gets called, before this value actually returns anything, this will need to get called and you want to call this on reduced string. So, okay, so this, I'm going to break this down in, in the next step, but for now, let's just see if this works. So CBA, which what you would expect. And if you do something like reverse this string, it says that inerts. And if you do, nine eight seven six five four three two one and you could do this thing which looks like a like a sad face but when you actually return it, it becomes a happy face okay so now let's break down what's going on here when you call reverse string for the first time with ABC it returns C plus reverse string passing in a B so the a B is the reduced string that we created it's basically the string that you passed in without the last character. And because we know how the call stack works, before anything gets returned, the function reverse string needs to complete and return its value. So this is the second time it's gonna to have to return its value because the first time is, well, it's the original time, the time we called with ABC. Now we're calling with just AB. That second call of reverse string returns B plus reverse string A. So this is the same thing. Before anything gets returned here, reverse string needs to get called again, this time with only A, and return its value. So it gets called and it returns A plus reverse string, this time being called with an empty string. So you'll notice that in the reverse string, when we when we wrote the, the function, there was a, an if statement at the beginning that said, only do this if the string dot length is greater than zero. Now here where we're calling it with an empty string, 
that's not going to happen and it's only going to return an empty string and also more importantly it's not going to call reverse string anymore that's one of the most important things with recursion is that you have to eventually get to a point where you don't keep calling the function or it's just like an infinite loop so then finally the last version of reverse string will return a plus empty string notice that there's no more reverse string being called anymore so at this point the values can actually be returned so it looks a bit like C plus whatever the second call returned, which was B plus whatever the third call was returned, which was A plus whatever the fourth call was returned, which was an empty string. So then you can put them all together. It becomes something like you could see on screen where it's C plus B plus A plus empty string. Then you want to just add the A plus the empty string, which just becomes A. And then you do B plus A, which is BA and then it's C plus B A. So this is at, at this point, this should be kind of obvious to, to what's going on here. But then what you're ended up with is return C B A and that's it. There's no more function calls. That's just the final value that gets returned. Okay. So that's basically going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.